Hi guys, welcome to a very informative video which I'm going to tell you guys some very very good tips on those who are interested in becoming or obtaining their commercial pilot's license or obtaining their airline, airline transport pilot's license. Obviously a lot of youngsters watching this video would be quite interested in sort of how many hours of practical experience they need, how difficult the exams are, how long it will take to become an airline pilot and where they could probably work and so forth. Um, this video will have a bit of a South African bias to it because I am from South Africa and what I'm going to show you guys is basically it's sort of the main airlines which do operate in South Africa. So those people who obtain their commercial pilots licenses or obtain the airline transport pilot licenses where which companies they would be flying for and more or less what the salaries would be so starting off probably what you had earned working for for example SAA or working for Mango which is the low cost airline of SAA or flying for um, SAF Air, you know, one of those airlines that, that a cheaper airline, what you could probably expect to earn, what kind of aircraft you'd probably end up flying, etc. etc. So let's jump right into it. All right, so the airline in South Africa, which is the oldest airline in South Africa, which has the largest fleet of aircraft is South African Airways. It has a fleet size of 54 aircraft and it flies to, 50, uh, to 42 destinations in the world. The fleet of SAA are made up of quite large Boeings and they are the, the SAA Airbus, they're not Boeings, Airbus, the SAA Airbus A330-200, the SAA Airbus A340-600, obviously these aircraft are designed to fly intercontinental flights, very long distance, long haul. Then your short haul aircraft, also like the Boeing 737-300. The 737-300s are used to fly cargo, um, which is also a sub uh, a subdivision of SAA's business interests. A subsidiary of South African Airways is the low-cost airline Mango, which has altogether 10 aircraft in, in service at the moment. And these aircraft consist of one Boeing 737-300 and nine 737-800s. All of these aircraft that are operated by Mango are aircraft which are short haul. So they obviously are smaller aircraft than the aircrafts used by SAA. Another well-known airline, local airline in South Africa is Kulula, Kulula.com. Now Kulula has a flight, a fleet size of 10 and they are operated by Calm Air. They fly to six different destinations in South Africa. They operate the Boeing 737-400 as well as the 737-800. Also, smallish Boeings, seeing that they are short-haul aircraft, not long-haul. And very interestingly, operate the same number as fleet size as that of Mango, another low-cost airline, as mentioned earlier. And Kalula operate one Boeing 737-400, and they operate nine Boeing 737-800s, so altogether 10 aircrafts, and you, you can also see the number of passengers that they can accommodate. 
Another low-cost airline in South Africa is one by the name of SAF Air, which stands for South African Air Freight. Essentially, they are an air freight carrying company. They, con they have 10 aircraft in their fleet. And what's interesting about aircraft that they have in their fleet is that they make use of military type aircraft and they have 10 well they have 10 units or, um, of these military type aircraft notice how this the number 10 corresponds to mango and corresponds to kalula so there's definitely a consistent number here although they are more freight focused um, SAF Air is more of a freight focused airline they have now begun offering low cost flights to passengers in South Africa and there is a bit of a price war on at the moment now the aircraft as mentioned which is utilized by SAF Air and I'm going to focus on the new aircraft that were ordered by SAF Air the Hercules or Lockheed 100 Hercules this as you can see it's it's a military type air, airplane propel propeller powered propeller powered unlike the other aircraft which we saw earlier which were powered through turbines this aircraft is about 20 feet shorter than the short haul Boeings and Airbuses which are used by Mango and Kalula as well as some of the Airbuses utilized by SAA for local flights so it's 112 feet in length while the short haul Boeing 737 is 133 feet in length. The popularity of the Hercules, specifically because it is a freight carrying aircraft, more designed, almost like a, a Nissan hard body, if I can put it that way. It's a, it's a hard wearing aircraft and it's designed to take a beating. It's not as pretty as the other Boeings and it travels a lot slower than the other aircraft but then again its purpose is basically to just be loaded with freight and to travel from one destination to the next so uh, so as mentioned this is the fleet of the of South African Airways you will notice, for example, if you look at the Airbus A330-200, which there, of which there are six in service at the moment with SAA, that aircraft has a length of approximately, it's about 190 feet. So you'll, you'll understand it's a lot larger than the other smaller short-haul Boeings, which also are larger than the Hercules, the L Here's a diagram of the A330-200. What you'll notice is its length is 188 feet and its width is almost 200 feet so it is wider than it is long all right so let's get into the nitty-gritty of what it takes to become an airline pilot for this video I'm going to exclude the pupil pilots license because that is a very entry-level pilot's license which can be obtained in a very short period of time if you are interested in that I can leave a link below in this video but I'm going to focus on 
the commercial pilot's license and the airline transport pilot's license, the requirements to obtain those licenses, and then also comments of people who have obtained that license and perhaps also obtained a university degree or a, a university engineering degree, just to compare difficulty, because it is a good question, you know, for youngsters starting out, they'd like to know how difficult it is to become or to get your commercial pilot's license and to obtain your airline transport pilot's license. Right, so your commercial pilot's license training syllabus. You need a minimum of 200 flying hours night training, instrument rating, which includes bad weather flying, eight examination subjects, including aircraft technical and general, flight planning and performance, air law, navigation, instruments, radio aids and communication, meteorology, human performances and limitations, and then as well, general radio telephony communication license and then you need to pass a practical flight test so what you will see it's it's not that difficult there are some subjects there which would require perhaps two or three months of studying but not that difficult obviously the trick and the difficult part here is to get the minimum number of hours. Right, and then we get to the, if I can call it the big daddy of the airline, the, the, the air license called the airline transport pilot's license. You must be 21 years of age, successfully pass six online ATPL examinations at CAA you will need to accumulate a minimum of one and a half thousand hours of flying or out of which 250 must be as the pilot in command out of which 100 hours must be nighttime flying and a minimum of 75 hours of instrument flying is also required. This will need a considerable amount of time to acquire and is normally gained during the course of employment as a commercial pilot, uh, getting your, having your CPL and working as a commercial pilot, say for an airline. Then lastly, you must complete a practical flight test on a multi-engine aircraft or a jet aircraft with a grade 1 designated flight examiner. For a list of those grade 1 designated flight examiners, I've got very good news for you if you are in South Africa. There are about a hundred of these grade 1 flight examiners in South Africa and about 400 people get their ATPLs per year so you know the, the chances of finding one of these designated flight examiners on a grade one is very good just to read that in the large font you may, however, write the ATPL examinations before you have 1,500 hours and qualify for a frozen ATPL until you meet the hour requirements. A frozen ATPL is a CPL with the ATPL theory subjects passed. Alright, so you guys have got a good idea on what is required both academically and as far as amount of hours is concerned. Now just to end off the video, I sometimes hear from guys who are concerned who have a degree at a university, are interested in getting an ATPL or a commercial pilot's license and an ATPL later, and are worried about the difficulty 
and comparing it to a degree. And also pilots who have ATPLs who would like their qualifications to be recognized on a certain level. The good news is, is that the South African Qualifications Framework has recognized the ATPL, the Airline Transport Pilot License, on an NQF level of 7, which is equivalent to obtaining a, an undergraduate degree, such as, for example, a BCom. That's what the South African Qualifications Framework has recognized the ATPL license on. The Commercial Pilot's License, CPL, has been recognized on an NQF level of 6, which is essentially equivalent to a South African a, a diploma at a South African university or Technicon. All right, so let's go through some of the comments of people who have or are interested in doing the ATPL or have university degrees or interested in have raised queries regarding, you know, its recognition as a qualification such as a degree. I have a BSc, which I spent three hard years studying for, culminating in numerous very tough three-hour examinations to test not only knowledge, but ability to reason and show original thought. I also have a South African ATPL, which took eight weeks of study to pass. And then also they say eight weeks of very straightforward comms exams, followed later by six weeks of a very part-time study to pass even more straightforward ATP exams. The fact that only six weeks were required for ATP was that met only took a long evening. So in other words, guys, don't be too worried. The academics of this qualification of the ATPL license is not very difficult in that person's opinion. A comment from another contributor to the blog was pilots feel that they should be regarded as professionals. This is true since they are expected to work professionally at all times. Pilots feel their qualification should be regarded as a degree. This is not necessarily true, even though it is hard work. Pilots feel that their qualification should be regarded as a degree. This is not necessarily true, even though it is hard work to become a pilot. The academic standard and sheer workload is not nearly as much as a four-year degree in engineering, for example. We pilots are lucky that all the questions are multiple choice. So guys, I keep saying do not be too stressed about the academic requirements. This is not about theory, loads and loads of theory. This is more about getting your practical experience. Interestingly as well, another contribute to mention that you don't need a matric to do your PPL which then leads to your CPL and your ATPL so that perhaps could be why the qualification of an ATPL is not fully recognized on a such a you know to, to a level of a university degree and lastly this contributor said I'm currently busy with my first year in tertiary studies BSc and having a CPA, CPL as well. I would have to say that one cannot compare the two. They are uniquely challenging in their own ways. Each one having its own degree of difficulty as far as workload goes. I'd say CPL is roughly equivalent to one year tertiary, but let me not generalize too much as there may be many other fields where the workload is much higher. My personal opinion is that the CPL plus the ATPL deserves more recognition than merely a license, but not quite to the level of a degree. Maybe if they combine aviation safety or some type of management aspect to it, then perhaps yes. Anyway, guys, and then there's some more comments you can obviously just Pause the screen 
some interesting comments that some of these guys wrote regarding you know the recognition of the airline transport pilot's license and the commercial pilot's license anyway guys to end off the video we're going to be sitting in the cockpit of a c-130 and uh yeah enjoy the flight what you will notice is quite a noisy aircraft so The C-130 Hercules, quite a noisy military aircraft. A true workhorse. So that's the cockpit of the C-130, guys. It's mentioned quite noisy. You can hear that it's a propeller engine in the background. Really noisy. It's not a very well insulated aircraft because of obviously it's got a military purpose. 